Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So hello everyone, uh, welcome to this lecture of uh, industrial and safety engineering on the topic of geometry of virtual world. Myself Krantira Ditya Dharmahapatra, I am the TA of this particular course. I am currently pursuing PhD under the guidance of Professor J. Maiti and my uh, thesis will be on the topic of virtual reality based accident modeling and simulation. So, <coughs> So, in this uh, particular uh, lecture, we will cover geometric models, position and orientation along with viewing transformation. So, in the previous lectures, so what we observed is in the beginning, we uh, taught, we, you are taught about three particular uh, subjects that are first is First is your 3D models, which is very much essential for the development of a virtual reality environment. Second is the incorporating these 3D models into a virtual environment, means development of a virtual environment. And final one is the final one is the interfacing between the user and the developed virtual environment. So for knowing the 3D model, from knowing the 3D models, virtual environment and interfacing, we should know how the mathematical background is taken care of in, in different models. So, for that, we should be knowing the uh, geometric models along with posi position and orientation along with the various types of transformation. So, in this geometric models, first we should know that virtual world consists of geometric models which is represented in a 3D Euclidean space with Cartesian coordinates. So, we should be focusing on this particular line that is 3D Euclidean space with Cartesian coordinates. Then the geometric models are the surfaces of solid regions in RQ real world then con which containing infinite numbers of points. This representation of models are done in terms of primitives in which re each represent infinite number of points. So, this primitive means the small computation program which will be very much essential to develop any 3D modeling, uh, 3D models or any 3D modeling software that the primitives is very essential. So, the simplest and most useful primitives is a 3D triangle, a planar surface patch that corresponds to all points inside on and on the boundary of the triangle is specified by the coordinates of the triangle vert vertices. Why we are considering triangle in uh, not others? Because if you are considering any quadrilateral form, then it will have many more com computer computational complexity and that will consume a lot of cost and lot of time. For the simplification purpose, we are considering 3D triangle is the most basic primitives used in the development of 3D models. So, to, to, to model a complicated object or body in the virtual world, numerous triangles can be arranged into a meshes. So, if you are developing a particular object or 3D model, then number of uh, num number of 3D triangles will be uh, merged and meshed into a particular mesh. So, for the particular uh, development of 3D model, so what is the data structure that is needed for uh, needed to needed to be known for the development of this 3D model. So, first is the geometric models are usually encoded in an efficient data structure that means the choice of data structure should be depend should depend on which operation to be performed on the model. This operation stands for operation stand for maybe the movement of operation movement of 3D models or the scaling of 3D models or the rotation of 3D models. As because we are mimicking a complete real environment, 
So, in the real environment, there are certain chances of static components and dynamic components. The static components does not having any movement, but the dynamic components are having movement in a linear axis or that can be in a rotation manner also. So, for that purpose, we are creating a common, da common data structure in which we can develop all the 3D models. For the, the most common data structure which is used in the modeling of 3D models is the half edge data structure. So, in this particular data structure, there are three elements. First is faces, then your edges and vertices. So, in this particular uh, data structure, each face represents a triangle, each face represents a triangle and each edge represents the border of one or two triangles without duplication, right. So, each vertex is said by, said between one or more triangles without duplication. So, we have to know the, we have to first uh, make a trade make a trade off between this creation of triangles in the terms of faces edges and vertices so the data structure is having pointers between adjacent faces edges and vertices so that the algorithm can quickly traverse the model components in a way that corresponds to how they are connected with each other so if in this particular diagram you can see if this uh, half edge structure is represented by e then the pointer should store the value of the previous edge and the next edge along with the twin edge. The twin edge is the adjacent face of the another triangle. So, this complete 3D model will be developed with the help of this fundamentals that the previous, the pointer should store the previous value of the edges, the pointer should store the next value of the edges and pointer should store the adjacent value of the edges of a other triangle, another triangle. So, along with that we have to consider another properties of this triangle that inside versus outside. So, if the mesh triangles fit together perfectly so that every edge borders are exactly two triangles and no triangles intersect unless they are adjacent along the surface, the model forms a barrier between inside and outside of the object. So, this property of models are called as coherent properties or these pro models are called, uh, called as coherent models. So, we have to consider the fact that there should be a barrier between inside and outside of the object. Otherwise, there will be confusion while creating the 3D models. It will be floating in the created environment. So, 3D models will be diverse and floating in the uh, created environment. So, coherent env uh, models, coherent models are very much necessary. Coherent models are very much necessary to have a notion between inside or outside in the virtual world generator, which you are taught in the previous lectures. So, high level design tool like Blender or Maya automatically build the coherent models. When we are going for development of any particular 3D models, so nowadays the softwares we are having to develop 3D models, those are having this property inbuilt. So, you do not have to know the, you do not have to go for this creation of inside and outside, uh, creation of barrier between inside and outside of the object, but you have to know the basic fundamentals between the, behind the creation of this barrier of barrier between inside and outside. So, this is another property of inside and outside of the uh, 3D models. Then if you are considering stationary or movable models. So, stationary models keep the same coordinates. The coordinates will not vary. It will keep the uh, coordinates intact. Similarly, if you are considering movable models, then it can be transformed into various position and orientation. So, some of the uh, uh, examples of st stationary models are streets floors and buildings. Similarly, some of the movable models are vehicles and avatars. So, this stationary and movable uh, models can be achieved with the help of three kinds of uh, three kinds of treatments. So, first is tracking devices. If you are using tracking devices, so it can track the movement of your different 3D models. Similarly, if you are giving any user input that user input that means any controller devices you are using to move uh, for the movement of this uh, particular 3D models, then it can be uh, the movability can be achieved also. Parallelly, th there is another property of this uh, movable models that is if you are providing physics, physics to that particular uh, movable model, movable models, so it will the move movement of that mo model can be taken care of with the laws of physics, the rules and principle of physics. Similarly, the uh, cho choosing of coordinate axis. So, coordinate axis for the models are chosen in terms of their placement and placement scale and the scaling. For movable models, the location of the origin and axis direction becomes extremely important because 
they affect how the model is rotated. So if you are considering the uh, model static models, then their placement and their scaling is very much important because for a um, for a replication of a real world, the static models and the movement models should look like the exact models that are present in exact components that are present in the real world, so that the user can feel the uh, can feel he, he is immersed in that particular virtual environment. So for the uh, movable models, the location of the origin and axis direction are very important because it will decide how the model is translated, how the model is rotated. So for the viewing of these models, so transformation properties uh, is done. So transformation property is taken, uh, is taken care of in the transformation property, it will help in determining where the points in the virtual world are appearing on the display. That means points inside the 3D models, how it is appearing on the particular display. The display methods are uh, already taught you in the previous lectures. So the rendering takes, next phase is the rendering. The rendering takes into account how each part of this model should appear after taking into account lighting sources and the material properties. So whenever the lighting uh, lighting is done, done to a particular 3D models, so how the rendering look like means after giving the lighting and uh, material properties to that particular object, how it is looking like in the display medium. That is the uh, concept of this rendering. Next we will go for this position and orientation. So let, let us consider a uh, 3D triangle where the coordinates are denoted as x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2 and x3, y3, z3. z3. So the, uh, if the translation property will be taken care of in this particular uh, topic, uh, in this particular model, then change of xt amount, yt amount and zt amount in the triangle's position will affect, how it will affect the position of x, y, z axis we will look. So the uh, um, position will be changed like x1, y1, z1. So x1 plus xt because it is uh, translated in xt amount in the x axis, similarly yt amount in the y axis and zt amount in the z axis. So each, each of the coordinates will be translated uh, in the amount of xt, yt and zt. For similarly for x2, y2 and z2 this property you, we can observe. Then, then the another concept is relativity. Relativity. So the if you will consider this uh, triangle, its original position was 10, 10, 20, 10, and 15, 15, 15. We are considering x and y axis, not the z axis. So if you are moving this triangle in the virtual world because of translation, how the coordinates are changing will look. So the coordinates of the virtual world is reassigned. So the triangle is going closer to origin. The translation is applied to the coordinates. It is called as the negation. So, if the uh, uh, original coordinates were 10, 10, 20, 10 and 15, 10 and the triangle is translated by the amount of xt is equal to minus 8, yt is equal to minus 7. So giving, uh, um, giving xt is equal to minus 8 then 10 minus 8 is your 2. Then similarly in yt axis 10 minus 7 is your 3. So the transform coordinates in the triangle is 2, 3, 12, 3 and 7, 8. In this case, the, what we did is the, we moved the object um, by giving the translation property to a particular uh, um, particular that particular triangle. Similarly, in another other fashion, uh, keeping the object constant, keeping the object uh, static, we can move, translate the origin also to uh, to nearer to the particular th triangle. That means 3D model. So in this property, if you are putting an object at the origin, then he will look at the he will look at the object uh, in a same same fashion in a both the case that means in this case that means in the previous case how the object is moved and in the second case how the origin is moved if the user will be at the this position at this position he will feel no difference between the uh, between two cases but he will have the per he will have the perception error that means if the user will move along with the uh, move along with the axis and the object is uh, object is static then it might increase the vr sickness v vr sickness even though it was it was the object that is moved right
next we will go for rotation so we uh, first saw the translation and the relativity then we will go for the rotation property so the orientation of the virtual world is changed through operation called rotation so consider a 3d virtual world in which the coordinates are x y z so consider a 3 into 3 matrix that is a transformation matrix m in which the different coordinates are mentioned so the by multiplying by multiplying we obtain m11 into x m11 uh, matrix then x y z matrix which is the original matrix we have considered then this is the complete transform matrix that is x dash y dash and z dash so x dash y dash and z dash is the transform point in the 3d virtual world so using simple algebra we can obtain that x dash is m11 into x plus m12 m12 into y plus m13 into z similarly we can obtain the coordinates for the y dash and z dash z dash so m, m is a transformation for which the original coordinates of this 3d component x y z means points in a 3d virtual world transform to x dash y dash and z dash so all the transformation not necessarily lead to rotation of points considered in the 3d virtual world so we have to consider certain properties which is to be applied to that particular uh, components so that the rotation can be achieved so first is the no stretching of axis that means in the previous slide you saw that m11 m2 m12 and m13 represent the transformation matrix along with this m21 m22 and m3 m23 so what uh, for no stretching of axis you should be having this prop you should be following this property that is m11 square plus m12 square plus m13 q is equal to 1 square is equal to 1 similarly m21 square m22 square and m23 square is equal to 1 and m31 square m3 t square and m33 square is equal to 1 so for this is this property is for the no stretching of axis similarly the model should not be sheared that that means the model should not be distorted so for the shearing properties m11 into m12 plus m21 into m22 plus m31 into m32 is equal to 0 similarly for m12 into m13 m22 into m23 m32 into m32 is equal to 0 similarly we can observe for the third condition also so first one is the no stretching of axis second one is the no distortion and third one is the no mirror images so for the mirror images so determinant of the transformant matrix should be 1 so if you will consider the determinant if you will calculate the determinant so this will come like this so m11 into uh, whole uh, into m22 into m233 minus m23 minus m32 similarly for m12 and m13 so these three properties should be maintained for the rotation of particular 3d components that means no stretching of axis no shearing and no mirror images so your pitch and roll so any three dimensional rotation can be described as a sequence of your pitch and roll rotations so what is roll a counter clockwise rotation of gamma we are taking the gamma as an angle rotation angle about the z axis in which the rotation matrix can be given by r z gamma is equal to r z gamma is equal to cos gamma minus sin gamma 0 sin gamma cos gamma 0 then 0 0 1 similarly for the pitch uh, pitch rotation a counter clockwise rotation of uh, angle beta about the x axis is considered in which the rotation matrix can be given by 1 0 0 0 cos beta minus sin beta then 0 sin beta and cos beta and similarly for the yaw motion a counter clockwise rotation of angle alpha about the y axis is considered so the rotation matrix is given by cos alpha 0 sin alpha 0 1 0 and minus sin alpha 0 and cos alpha so in three of the uh, different kinds of rotation that means ro roll pitch and yaw you have to you have to consider first thing is z axis in roll pitch uh, x axis in pitch motion and the yaw uh, y axis in the yaw motion so if you are com combining the rotation then yaw pitch roll rotation are combined sequentially to attain a possible 3d rotation so r 
alpha gamma and beta can be represented as, uh, as R, R y alpha R x beta and R z gamma. So, the ranges of uh, this alpha and gamma are 0 to 2 pi and the pH varies from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. So, the if you are considering means translation and rotation in one matrix to apply both rotation and translation in a single operation 4 by 4 homogeneous transformation matrix is used. Why? Because if you are transforming uh, means with the help of 3 into 3 matrix the operation will be not possible means for, for rotation and the rotation and the translation uh, in a three, 3 into 3 matrix is not possible for that particular property what we are considering we are considering 4 into 4 homogeneous 4 into 4 homogeneous matrix. So, for that homogeneous matrix it in a particular matrix is used that is homogeneous transformation a particular matrix is used that is T R B that is the rigid body transformation in this T R B first is R is R stands for the rotation matrix along with X T Y T Z T. So, the matrix will be represented like this 4 into 4 matrix in the rotation is having 3 components then X T Y T Z T is for translation matrix. So, if you are uh, considering a point as X Y Z then the rotation uh, the rotation and scaling the rotation and translation will be if you will given to the particular uh, component then the transform matrix you can obtain as S dash Y dash and Z dash. So, given the points have coordinates x, y, z 1 as we are considering 4 into 4 matrix, 4 into 4 homogeneous matrix. So, the transform coordinates will be x dash, y dash, z dash and 1 which we can obtain from here. This is the operation for the uh, trans, uh, translation and rotation. If you are considering inverting transform transformation for the transformation in inversion of transformation. So, x t, y t and z t the inverse will be simpler minus x t minus y t and minus z t, but for the rotation r inverse is equal to r transform r transpose. So, inverse of homogeneous transform matrix should be in the correct order as the operations are not commutative. So, if we will consider this uh, matrix uh, <coughs> this particular matrix as the tra homogeneous transformation matrix then we can put minus uh, x t minus y t and minus z t in the uh, inverse matrix and this r should be represented as r t. But in this particular matrix the order should be should not be maintained that means in the pre, uh, whatever in the operation the translation and the rotation this should uh, these two properties are not commutative that means the rotation should be followed by the translation. For this particular matrix the rotation is not uh, the rotation and the translation are not following the particular properties for that purpose we are denoting and particular uh, de denoting with the help of a particular transformation that transformation matrix in the first page you will be going for the translation part having minus x t minus y t and minus z t and secondly you will be going for the rotation. In this part there will be no rotation and in this part there will be no translation. So, finally, we will obtain the x dash y dash z dash and 1 this is our final objective that means the transform coordinates for a particular 3D model. Next the viewing transformation. So, uh, in, in this viewing transformation we will see a eyes view that means the eye is at the origin of a model. So, how the this uh, 3D model for a eye can be uh, 3D model can be developed for a view of eye that is represented here that means the let eye is an object model in which we want to place the virtual world at a position E is equal to E1, E2 and E3. So, the orientation is given by the matrix the orientation is given by the matrix x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2 and x3, y3, z3. So, the rotation and translation to the i would be applied to all the vertices placed in the particular matrix uh, particular matrix rather, rather than moving the i in the virtual world all of the models in the virtual world can be moved with respect to the i's frame of reference. Hence, 
inverse transformation is to be applied. So, what we read in the previous uh, slide, the inverse transformation is to be applied for the particular ice frame of reference. If you want to move all the models, all the models created models in the virtual environment, uh, virtual world in the terms of ice frame reference, then you have to apply the inverse transformation to the developed I, mo I model. That means, the model object model placed in the I view. So, in this we will go for this uh, translation along with the rotation. So, two kinds of matrices will be considered here. Next, we will see orthographic projection and the perspective projection. projection. So, uh, the orthog orthographic projection stands for the code um, uh, having the z axis as having the z axis as your 0. That means, if uh, x y z denotes the coordinates of any point, if we project all the points in a vertical x y plane by forcing each coordinate to be in that projected in that particular when plane, then it is called as your orthographic projection in which the projection will be on x and uh, x and y axis means x sorry x and y plane that means the z axis stands for 0. So, that will be considered as the orthographic projection. Similarly, for the perspective projection for each point x y z consider a line through the origin. You can look at this figure in which we have considered a line through origin in which the all coordinates are um, mentioned as lambda x, lambda y and lambda g in uh, lambda z in which lambda is a real number. So, in other words you can say lambda is a parameter that reaches all points on the line that contains both coordinates 0 0 0 and our point that is x y z. So, by selecting z is equal to minus 1 that is the plane the planes equation is z is equal to minus 1 then the virtual screen is kept directly in front of the eye. Then the lambda z is lambda z will be minus 1 then lambda is equal to minus 1 by z. Similarly, you can consider uh, calculate the coordinates for the other points on the screen that is s dash is equal to your minus x by z and minus y dash is equal to minus y by z. So, if the vertical screen is placed at the some location d along the z axis because we have considered minus 1 here, but in case of uh, a, low, a distance d from the z axis we obtain more general expression for the location of a point on the screen. That means, x dash is equal to d x by z, y dash is equal to d y by z provided d is equal to your lambda z. So, scaling properties of objects at various distances are maintained and this will ultimately help in perception of depth and scale. So, in this lecture we saw that first we will go for uh, we will see that how the 3D models are created because our main focus will be 3D models. Then our second focus will be on the development of virtual environment in which all the 3D models will be incorporated and the virtual environment will be created. And the third one is the interfacing between interfacing between the user and the virtual environment. So, for the creation of this 3D models, we saw that different properties are there, how we are uh, considering and Cartesian coordinates for a triangle. Then we are uh, seeing how the translation property is taken care of, then we are seeing how the rotation property is taken care of for a 3D models. Then we went for the transformation. So, different view in eyes view how the transformation can be done. Then finally, the virtual environment in the virtual environment how we will look at the different models that are developed with the help of uh, 3D modeling softwares. That means, the different operation you will perform in uh, perform to that particular 3D models that means, static and dynamic components, how the scaling properties of the uh, static, uh, static and dynamic components are taken care of and how the movement properties and movements translation and the rotation properties of the 3D models are taken care of we can know with the help of this particular lecture. Thank you.